Hey friends, welcome to this first video. Now, my assumption is that you have never worked with Nine before. This is a course where we start from scratch for the beginners. This is why in this first video, we want to explore the interface of Nine. So just in case you have worked with Nine before, you have some experience, then of course, feel free to skip this video and start with the case study starting in the next video. Having said that, now let's get into the interface. The first time after downloading and installing Nime, you see it should see an interface kind of similar to this one. I say kind of because it might be a little bit different depending of course on the Nime version you use, but most of the time Nime is pretty consistent regarding this. So what can we find here? Now let's start actually at the top left. There we have the Nime Explorer. This Nime Explorer shows you here various workflows as well as workflow groups. So what's the difference here? You can see that you have some kind of folders here. Now these folders, these are so-called workflow groups. And in these folders, we can store workflows. In order to create them, we can easily right click here on local and say either create a new Nime workflow or Nime workflow group. You can also see that you got the icons here so you can create a group and then add various workflows to the specific group. Currently, as you can see here on our canvas in the middle, that's what I call the workflow canvas. This is where we will build our workflow. Currently it's empty because we don't have any workflow open. So to open a workflow, let's actually first start with creating a workflow group here. So let's do that. And then let's name this workflow group. For instance, uh, nine case study like that. Then I click on finish and then we just wait. And then this nine workflow case study actually uh, gets created in here and we will find it in here under the various workflows I have, which is in this case, this one here. And you can see I can't uh, drill in because currently it's empty. Here you have the option to add additional title here on the right side, as well as give a description. You only need to click on this pencil icon here and then you can add it here if you want to do that. So just let me close this for now. And let's actually create our first workflow in here. So right click on, in this case, this specific workflow group, and then you can say, I want to create a new workflow. So if you do this and let's call this, let's get started for now, start it, just get going. And then if I click on finish, you will see that just takes a little bit of time, but then now we have this, let's get started in here. And now we can actually get started creating our workflow in here. One additional little thing I want to tell you at the beginning is I always like to have some kind of grid in here. This is why I go in here, click on this little tool icon here and say I'd like to actually show the grid lines. So if I tick this option and I click OK, then I have these grid lines in here. You don't have to use them, but I personally prefer it this way. So now we have created our first workflow group, which is appearing here in the Nime Explorer, as well as we have our first workflow created. And there we can get started with Nime itself. So this is what we find here in the Nime Explorer. Just by the way, if I scroll to the top, there are two additional options here. The, the first one is the Nime Hub. You can create a free account if you want, and you can connect to the Nime Hub, and then you can publish your workflows uh, to the world, to the whole internet, if you want to do that. Of course, that's something you want to avoid if you're dealing with uh, proprietary data right from your company. The second one is a Nime a server from the Nime, so from the company itself, which allows you to show and visualize various examples. There are some example workflows you can download from this uh, Nime hub here. And the third one, the third option, this is your local workspace. This is where you can create locally, as we have done here, your workflow groups as well as your workflows. So that's basically everything you can find in the Nime Explorer. What else do we have? Second, there is a so-called workflow coach, which is this window here. Now, what Nime is doing is it's tracking uh, from the people, of course, if they consent to that, they, it's tracking actually what kind of node and combination of nodes Nime uses. So what is the workflow actually built? Um, what kind of structure is the workflow? And based on that, uh, they, they track that and the workflow coach then is able, because of this um, traction, is able to then propose 
some nodes. So for instance, if you get started with a workflow and then you want to use a next node, then this workflow can give you uh, percentage numbers as well as propose some or recommend some nodes which you can use the next as the next step in your workflow. That's basically what you can find here. You'll see this um, while we develop the workflow, but that's basically what it is. You don't have to use it, but sometimes it's easier to simply use the node directly from here and drag and drop it on the canvas. So for instance, if I do that, I can simply drag and drop it in here. If I drop it, you see that now the node, that's what we call them in NIME, the nodes here is available, and now I can actually configure this node if I want to do that. Just to tell you that, in order to configure a node, simply right-click on a node or press F6, as you can see here, and then you can configure it. And based on the configuration options, then a window appears, and this allows you con to configure this node. Now this first one, this as an example, the table creator is kind of uh, easy because all it does is simply allows us to manually enter data in here. What you might also have spot is as soon as I drag the node from the workflow coach or the node repository, uh, just a second and I can tell you something about that. But as soon as I do this, you see that also the description window here changes. So this description window always tells you something about the node you're currently using. So it tells you, for instance, something about the ports, uh, as well as some kind of additional information about various configuration settings. And this is why I would highly recommend whenever you're using new nodes in NIME and you don't know how the node works, take a look at the description window, because this is really great. It's a really great help because it tells you in detail what various options do for the node and what kind of configuration settings you should choose and what they do. So this is a great help, especially if you're dealing with new nodes just to mention that. So just let me close this for now. And uh, then let's actually talk about this node repository here. Now, of course, the workflow coach just recommends nodes. It doesn't mean that it always gives you exactly the node you need. Normally, what you do is you, uh, you use the node repository down here. So in this node repository gives you all the nodes which are available in NIME. So you can see that this is actually also structured. So I can see, for instance, IO for input output. I can go here and then I can say, what do I want to do? So I do want, want to read some data. If I click here, I can see there's, for instance, an Excel reader to read data from Excel files or a file reader, a CSV reader and other kinds of readers like table reader, PMML reader and so on. So um, that's basically what you can find here. And of course, you find this for various options for writing. So to output data, after, for instance, transforming some data in NIME, you want to write it back instance, for instance, here in a CSV file or an Excel file or other kinds of options you can find here, right? So really a lot of options in here, but of course you do not have to uh, go in like here and uh, take a look, for instance, down here and, and drill down. If you don't want to do it, this is where this search option comes into play. That's what I use most of the time. And especially if you're uh, dealing a little bit longer with NIME and you know exactly what you're searching for, then this is quite helpful to simply search here. There is basically another option which I would uh, encourage you to trigger. This is this fuzzy search. There are two options to search for a specific node. So either the normal search or if you click this, then the fuzzy search, which is here enabled by default for me. And the fuzzy search is kind of helpful because it allows you really to search just um, very, uh, let's say, uh, well, you do not need to specify exactly what you're searching for. It gives you more options for the search results. So this is why it's kind of helpful, because sometimes you might not know exactly what the node is called, uh, but if you just go uh, search for a specific term, which might go in the direction you want to use, then the fuzzy search might also find this node and can give it and show it to you here. So for instance, if I search for Excel, just as an example here, I can see all the Excel nodes in here, as well as also, for instance, cell replacer. And this, for instance, would not be available if I untick this option here, right? Because then I only search for Excel and exactly Excel. That's why I always leave this on because it gives me more search results and oftentimes it helps me to get exactly the node I want. But it's up to you whether you want to have it or not. Having said that, also, all these windows in here, you can actually configure them. So you can drag and drop the window and place it to another, uh, well, for instance, I can drag the workflow coach and place it in here on the right side, or I can minimize it and uh, maximize it and so on. So you can do that if you do not prefer the default uh, setting, what NIME looks like and where the windows are placed. 
There's at the bottom here, we have outline. Outline is just, as you can see, maybe here, it's just uh, uh, actually a zoom out of the original canvas you have here. You can also press your control and then zoom out or zoom in. That's also possible in here, just in case you need a little bit more space here on your workflow canvas. But that's what the outline actually does. Nothing more, nothing less. Beside this, we have here a console. The console down there gives you some information. There you can also uh, take a look at the error log. Uh, gives you also some information about whether some error appeared and if so, uh, what exactly is the error reason. So that's what this is for. I can also clear the console if I cl just click on that and then the console is clear again. So these are just a few additional informations. It's not that important for, for right now, but just want to give you some kind of explanation what this actually is. So that's basically it for the canvas itself. So very important, if you get started or want to get started, first create your workflow itself inside the Nime Explorer. Either create also a workflow group, which we have done here and which I'm going to use during the case study, or you can also right click on local here and create your workflow directly in here if you don't want to have a separate folder for that. But still, I like to have some kind of structure, that's why I use it here. Workflow coach, as well as the node repository, this is what we're going to use. This contains all the nodes in NIME, which you can then simply drag and drop after selecting them and place them on the, to the canvas in here. And after we do this, then we can still uh, get started by configuring the nodes. So right clicking on a specific node, go to configure option here, and then you can see here the window which appears here, and then this allows us to configure the node itself. For instance, for the Excel file, just to show this for you, of course, if we want to read some data, that's some Excel file, we, we need to specify here a file path to do that, right? So that's, for instance, something as well as some kind of additional information, like uh, what is the sheet we want to read, uh, where exactly, what do you want to get started, want to read the whole sheet, or actually uh, something, for instance, only from uh, column number B to D and so on. All this can be specified in here. And we show, uh, I'm going to show you an example, of course, later on for that as well also when we dive deeper into the case study. But that's basically it. And uh, for the notes itself, uh, there are different kinds of notes. Notes are also colored. You can see here, for instance, those input notes. So when we read data, these have an orange color. So NIME also works with colors here, meaning um, depending on the color, you know exactly what this kind of note is going to do. So for instance, data transformation notes are often yellow and uh, there are other colors. For instance, output nodes in order to write data are oftentimes red, but we will see this as well. So it's just a visual uh, help indicator in order to give us some information what the node is doing. But still, as you can see here, if you have no clue about the Excel reader, take a look at this very um, extensive description here, which is great, right? Which gives me a, a lot of information also about the various configuration options, for instance, filter options, include subfolders, file folder URL, and so on. So this, what you can find here inside this description, this is exactly, if I right click here one more time and press configure, this is what you find here. For instance, here include subfolders and file, file for instance here, which you specify, and this is exactly what is descri uh, described here. So what exactly do you need to specify here in order to basically read the data in? So that's why this is very helpful. That's why I want to really encourage you, if there's a new note, have a look at this description for the note. And in order to get the description, simply click on the note. So if I click on a table reader one more time, you see that now I get a description for the table reader, right? So at first, of course, you need to select, and then you get the description for the note. And each description, of course, is a little bit different. If I click on the canvas one more time, then of course I get the information for my current workflow. And uh, that's basically it for that. Maybe one last thing before we end this chapter, of course, is at first for a note, you see that there's a little a traffic light indicator, which means there are actually three states for the node. There's a red state, as you can see here, with a little warning message here. As I can tell you here, I have not specified any file. So red simply means that it's not configured the node. Uh, a yellow indicator normally means that the node is configured. So I could actually run the node now. And a green indicator would then mean that the node is triggered successfully and we have an output for the node. Of course, this indicator can also be uh, red um, if, for instance, any kind of error appears. And to show this to you, let me right click on the table read, uh, creator. Let me go to configure here and let me just enter some dummy data here. Let's say uh, here, um, hello, 
and uh, so and welcome to uh, say nine okay like that for instance I just entered some some various data in here and now if I click OK the node would be configured it's yellow in here and it's ready for execution and in order to execute the node I could now either go inside the ribbon bar here and press this run button so you can also see I can use a shortcut press F7 or I could right click on the node and can also execute the node that would also work and if I do that, let me just click it here. You see that now the node has been executed, the traffic light is green, and now the data is read into NIME and can be used in the next node. So if I right click here, whenever a node is executed, you have down there an option to see the results. So the result of this table looks like that. So it's simply a little small, a small little table with one column, and it contains exactly the string values I've specified here. Okay. So that's basically it for actually you dragging a node into the canvas, uh, the various node states, as well as if you execute a node, then actually have a look at the result itself. So beside this, you can also always reset a node. If you right click here and I go to reset or press F8, then of course you can see that now the node is again yellow and the node does not have any output. So if I take a look at the output, you see that there is no data because the node has not been executed yet. Only if you execute the node, this time I press the run button maybe from here, then of course, if it's run successfully, now it's green, and then we have an, actually an output, which we can use in the next step, okay? So that's basically it for the various uh, steps uh, on the traffic light in Lime. And maybe as a last option, uh, just of course, like probably any other tool, Lime also have this toolbar in here, which gives you also some kind of options like we've seen. For instance, if I want to trigger something, I could do it here or, or press F7. Um, there's also options to stop the workflow while it's running. For instance, you can also do it like here as well. So various options in here. Very important, what I often use is uh, take a look at that, this one here, this option, because I would like to have the grid lines as, we, as we've seen at the beginning. And also I personally prefer the curved connections. Um, that means that the, the connections between the nodes are not uh, uh, straight lines. They are actually curved. It's a little bit, uh, looks a little better for the eye, but it doesn't change your workflow at all, just to keep that in mind, okay? So uh, let me just click on cancel now. That's fine. And that's basically it, everything you need to know for the interface uh, right now, okay? So that's it actually for this first introduction to video. So you have seen what the interface looks like and you also have seen how to drag or get started with the first nodes into NIME. And that's basically it for that. Now, next, we're gonna start with the case study and then we dive hands-on into NIME. So I can't wait to see you in the next video. Until then, best guys.